Hello, everyone, and welcome to week seven of MC200. I hope you are all having a great week. I wanted to encourage you guys that you are doing an excellent job. I've been very encouraged by your peer interviews, uh, from the questions to the drafts. So uh, doing great work and really appreciate you guys putting in all the effort that you are. I know all of the writing exercises and lectures and readings, it seems overwhelming right now, but I can see in the difference in your writing, the improvements that you guys are making because you are practicing, because you are reading. So keep up the great work. I just really wanted to encourage you guys that even though it's been a tough semester, I'm already seeing great growth in your writing as media professionals. And so I hope that you are feeling that way too. So for week seven, we're going to be talking about how you pitch a new story. And so uh, the videos for this week's lecture are going to cover two primary sources of news for journalists, which are speeches and meetings, as well as public affairs reporting, such as crime. Now, speeches and meetings are where I expect you to uh, kind of get your first story ideas from. But we will talk about that a little bit more um, in your print story assignment, which I will um, tell you a little bit more about in this week's modules. But first, uh, you're going to have an assignment first in your discussion board and then later um, a final pitch due uh, on Monday of next week. And so I wanted to go over story pitches and how to find story ideas so that you'll be better prepared for those assignments. So if you're not familiar with how a newsroom operates, one of the first things that most uh, journalists do when they come into the newsroom is attend a newsroom meeting or an editorial meeting. This is a time when the members of a newsroom meet together to decide what content will be produced for that day. Or if it is a weekly, you might do it for the week. Um, and you're really just trying to give everyone out assignments and know what everyone is working on. Typically, you are going to have an editorial meeting in the morning and then another one in the afternoon. Uh, the, the main people that you are trying to convince in an editorial meeting are going to be the newsroom leaders, which may be an editor, it may be a news director, someone like that. But the entire staff will attend an editorial meeting, including reporters, videographers, producers, the news desk, etc. Um, so make sure that you are attending editorial meetings prepared with story ideas or pitches. When I worked in the newsroom, my news director had a rule that if you didn't come prepared to every morning meeting, every single day that you were working with five different story ideas, then uh, you had the ability to have strike, uh, strikes against you. And if you got three strikes against you, if you were caught without story ideas, you could be fired. And I actually knew one journalist who was fired based on this reason for not preparing enough for editorial meetings. So they are very important um, aspects of journalistic work and coming up with story ideas is going to be a key task for you as a media writer. A pitch is that sharing of your story idea and telling other journalists or your editorial team what you want to work on, what stories you want to pursue. So it's really an act of persuasion. You are trying to convince someone that your idea is best. So uh, you want to know what their motives for doing things are. Are they looking for clicks? You know, is your newsroom looking for clicks or engagement? Do they want high ratings for their broadcast news show? Um, are they seeking to inform the public about something? Are they wanting to be a watchdog role? So you really want to know what your editors uh, want and what they hope to gain from it, as well as what your audience wants. Uh, so your pitch should always connect back to our news values because you're showing people why it is worth the time and the resources for you to do this story. One uh, acronym that's used often in newsrooms and generally in, in persuasion is WIFM. What's in it for me is what that stands for. 
And that means you're trying to convince people that your story would be worthwhile for them. And you really need to think about it twofold. It should be worthwhile for your news organization because it garners readership, gains credibility, shares important information, is entertaining, reaches the goals of the newsroom somehow. Or you, uh, or well, duly, you really need to also think about with them for your audience. You need to think about what will your audience be getting out of this story idea that makes it newsworthy. So here's what you would include in your pitch. You need to present the five W's and an H and connect those who, what, where, when, why, and how back to our news values. This should be done fairly simplistically, two to three sentence maximum. And within that original pitch, you would need to tell your angle. What are you hoping to have the story look like in the end? It's not enough to say, I want to do a story on immigration, for instance. That's a huge topic. Instead, you may want to talk about how COVID regulations are affecting immigration offices or something like that. So you need to find a more specific angle. You should also be able to tease the story or be able to sell it to a non-news person in about a sentence. This is especially important for broadcasters who have to be able to write teases for every story that they do but it's a good practice for a print or digital journalist to get involved in as well, because it's how you get people to recognize the news value of your story idea. Your news pitch should also connect to timeliness. Why is it important that you take time and resources out of your day right now to do the story? Why can you not do it next week or next month? So connect your story to something that is timely and meaningful right now. You need to know what sources are available. So this means identifying people who would be willing to talk to you before you ever uh, get assigned to the actual story. Now that can be anyone from an official, uh, someone who is affected by your story idea, things like that. For our class, uh, when you do your pitch, you're going to need the name, title and contact information of the people that you want to speak to before I approve your story. Um, so that means doing the research and talking to people about your story before you actually start doing this. This will prevent you from starting on a story and then realizing that you can't get in contact with anyone. So uh, that's why I require that you do not put someone like, or put your source as, I'll talk to a student. No, you need to say, I'm going to talk to John Smith, who is a freshman, and here is his email address that he said I could use. So um, that's why I do that for you guys. You also need to consider what resources the story will require. How long will it take you? Um, will it take you, you know, a few hours? Will it take you a day? Will it take you months to do an, in, an in-depth investigation piece? Consider what resources are available, and then also uh, if the story will require more time or resources. You also need to be thinking about what visuals you can add to your story. Even if you're doing print or digital, you should still be thinking in a multimedia format. What photos can you take? What graphics could you create? What are the visual ways that you can tell this story? And then within your pitch, you need to explain why it matters to the audience and why it matters to your newsroom. So pitching is normally done verbally during your morning or afternoon meeting, but you need to be prepared with enough details to email your leadership uh, with follow-up details. So where can you find news? For new journalists, it can be difficult to think about story ideas. So here are some of the primary places that you can find news. The first is just talking to people in your community. Uh, you know, the things that you talk with your friends about are most likely going to be things that are newsworthy and important to you um, and the university community that you're writing for. So think about the conversations that you're having with people and see where the news values really are in those conversations. If you hear your friend talking about 
some event that they attended or some controversy that they saw. Ask a few more details, you know, be curious and, and think about how you could make that into a story. Uh, you, one of the common places to find news is through official meetings and documents. You need to be creating relationship with officials uh, such as police, uh, sheriff's department, um, Sometimes you'll uh, call fire departments as a journalist. Uh, you need to be involved in the local city government. So uh, next on Wednesday's module, we'll be talking about speeches and meeting. And then on Friday, uh, I'll be discussing public affairs reporting. And we'll go into a little more detail on how to find news in those areas. Another great source of news is actually the news itself. You should be watching and consuming news on a regular basis as a journalist. It's why I have you guys do your current events quizzes. When you read the news, especially the national news, what you can do is then take a national story and localize it or give it a new angle. So um, as different uh, universities are considering closing or going remote, even taking away spring break, what you could do is then localize that and ask Montevallo students how they would feel about those changes. And that becomes a new angle for your news. So make sure you're reading the news and staying aware of current events. Social media is another great place to find news, whether that's following organizations that might have local events, keeping up with community calendars, we're just finding what is trending on social media. That is a wonderful place to stay connected to newsworthy events. You know, when you're working for a news organization, a lot of your story ideas will come from press releases. If you're interested in going into media relations, you'll understand the importance of a press release because it's how you get the news to cover you. But as journalists, we rely very heavily on press releases to let us know about things going on in our community. You can look up press releases, even if you're not with a news organization, on many organizations' websites. Um, so for instance, like the American Heart Association has their own page where they keep their media press releases. Uh, so you could even look at like UAB Hospital and look at their media page, and it will have a list of all their press releases. That would be a great idea for you to use to find local stories. You can use community calendars to see uh, different events that are going on. Montevallo obviously has its calendar. Uh, that can be a great place to look to see what different events are happening around campus. Also think about news that matters to people. Some of the main topics that are very important to readers are education, weather, economy, and health. So find those larger national stories in those areas and then localize them so that they matter to people in your community. And finally, just be observant. If you see something that you think is interesting or newsworthy, it's likely that other people will find it interesting or newsworthy as well. So the more you can be observant and curious about the world around you, the better you'll be able to come up with new story ideas. In order to form a story, you need to think about what type of news you want to tell as well. So if you're going to do a story about uh, the spread of COVID-19 in, in Alabama, or maybe Shelby County more specifically, that's still a pretty broad story. So you need to think further about what your angle is. One of the first things you need to de decide is if it's going to be hard news or soft news. Hard news is about more challenging topics. It's a little more straightforward and facts-based and tends to be more investigative in nature where you're digging into information. Um, there are two types of hard news on top of the general category. The first is breaking news and you'll hear this all the time, you know, on broadcasts, they're like breaking news, new information, you know, things like that. Um, it's a little dramatic. The real term of breaking news means that as the journalist is reporting live, new information is coming in right that minute. So if, then, if something happened two hours ago, it's not really breaking news anymore. It actually becomes developing news. It's new information that's continuing to come out and there tends to be less of a time limit on developing news as opposed to breaking news. 
Now, soft news, on the other hand, is more feature in nature. When you were doing your peer interview stories, you were writing a soft news piece because it doesn't deal with hard facts and statistics. Instead, you're telling a narrative about a person. It doesn't make it any less newsworthy. It's just a different type of news and a different style of news. Soft news pieces are a little less rigid. They usually tend to be uh, more community-based and they're less time sensitive. Evergreen stories are those that you can complete anytime. They don't have a specific date and time that you are held to. So an idea like um, doing a story on the murals that are all around the university, that's an evergreen story. I could either do that story today or I could do it three weeks from now. Those murals are still going to be there. But if I were going to a ribbon cutting of a new mural that's come out, then that is time sensitive. It wouldn't be considered evergreen because we have a date and time that I need to be at a certain place. So be considering those elements as you think about your story ideas. Some additional tips for pitching and coming up with story ideas. Just be creative. You don't want to be the same old bland journalist doing the same old stories. Try to find things that you find interesting that are different and unique. You also want to find new angles on old stories. So everyone's going to do, you know, the safety precautions at, universe, at the university for COVID-19. Instead, find a new angle. Instead of just doing safety precautions, why not go and talk to the people who are doing the 3D printing of face shields or something like that? That's a new interesting angle that isn't often talked about in the regular media. You want to be persuasive when you're pitching, so think about how you can connect what you want to do with what the leader or news team wants as well. So try to bridge that gap so that you can persuade them that your idea is best. You want to be confident when you're pitching as well. You need to have researched the idea that you're talking about so you know what you're talking about when you're trying to sell them on your story idea. As I said before, you should have a lot of ideas ready at all times. I should be able to, you know, put up an assignment at midnight and say, uh, by midnight tonight, you need to give me 10 story ideas and you should be ready to do that. I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. But you should always be thinking about story ideas as a media professional. So uh, start a list, start a note folder in your phone of things that you think are interesting. Just always have a bank of story ideas ready. You should also try to work backwards in your pitch. Think about what you think the end piece should look like and then figure out what elements or pieces you would need in order to get it done. Know that you'll likely need to do your story alone, especially for our class purposes, you're going to be reporting alone, but it is more and more common for reporters to be working by themselves without a camera operator or anyone else helping while they're out in the field. So make sure that you can do whatever you're thinking about doing uh, with the resources that you have alone. Think through the time constraints as well. Um, you know, I'd, I appreciate when my uh, students really want to do these in-depth investigative stories, but when you have a week or less to write a story like you do next week, you don't want to be doing a complicated story. Instead, you want something like a meeting or a speech that you can attend for 30 minutes, write something up, and get it done with. It, it doesn't make it any less of a story. It just is a different time constraint. Don't take rejection personally either. Uh, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've pitched a story and my news director is like, that's a terrible idea and just moves on. Y you can get your feelings hurt if you take rejection too seriously. The news is just a very hard business and it's very fast paced. So sometimes you're going to be rejected. In fact, you're going to be rejected often. So keep your head up, keep uh, going through your list of story ideas. And if your first one doesn't work out, go to your next one. Now, uh, we're going to be doing a print story assignment for next week, week eight. Uh, the final story is going to be due on Friday, October 16th. It is going to be a print style story, um, and you have to turn in three pitch ideas by Monday, October 12th. 
Now you may notice that if you're pitching the story for the first time by the 12th, then I have to approve your pitch uh, and then you have to turn in the final story by the 16th. That's going to give you very limited time constraints. So start working now in advance. If you turn in a pitch early, let me know and I will review them early to give you a little bit more time to work. But I would prefer you do a community event meeting or a story off of an official document so that you can um, do this a lot faster. So you need to pitch two ideas in your discussion board today and then listen to the feedback of others in the class who are commenting on your pitch to decide what you think are good ideas and bad ideas. You can also take the ideas of other students and build off of them. You shouldn't copy and paste their ideas, but if you can think of a new angle that you like better than what you pitched originally, go ahead and include it within your final pitch. Now the final pitch exercise will be due on uh, Monday, October 12th, and you're going to send me three pitches for the print story that you want to complete by October 16th. Send them in the order of preference of what you want to do. So the story that you most want to do should be pitch number one. Now, if I don't approve pitch number one, then I'm gonna move on to pitch number two and say, yeah, this one looks good, or maybe I have to go all the way down to pitch number three. So put them in order of the ones that you would prefer to do. You cannot start work on your print story until I approve your pitch ideas. So make sure that you pitch me at sooner rather than later so you will have more time to work ahead. Here is the uh, print pitch document. So uh, this is in our module. You'll notice that uh, you have pitch number one, and then you'll have two additional pages that say pitch number two, pitch number three. Use three to five words to describe it. And then um, you will have a point where you can describe your five W's and an H. Imagine you have 30 seconds to sell your idea to your editor. That's what you're doing here. You're just writing it down. Make sure you connect back to news values though, because that's what will persuade me as an editor to allow you to do the story. In one sentence, you're gonna convince a friend to read your story. So this draws back to why it would be important for an audience member and what makes it interesting. What's in it for your reader? Uh, place your story idea on a scale of one to 10 on how widespread of interest it would be to the University of Montevallo community. Um, and then explain why you rated it that way. The most important part is that you give me the name, title, and contact information of at least two sources that you have already confirmed that you can talk to. I'm expecting that once I approve the story idea, you are going to go to those two people to get interviews and quotes from. So know your sources before you pitch and don't include something generic like, I'm gonna to talk to a student. You need to list them by name with their title and give me their contact information. You also need to think about two visual elements that you could use in your story. Make sure that you have a right to publish whatever you're uh, attaching. So you can either take a photo, create a graphic yourself, or you're going to have to get written permission from the original creator in order to use it. And then I want you to consider why this would be a good print story versus a good TV or radio story. Um, so think about why this would be a good story for the print medium. So now that you understand a little bit more about how to generate story ideas and how to pitch, I want you to go into your discussion post and practice pitching two ideas to your classmates, listen to their feedback, and then use it to build your final pitch uh, by Monday. The peer edits on your peer interview assignment are going to be due Wednesday of this week, so don't forget to do that. And then your AP Review 3 homework will also be due Wednesday. Make sure you read chapter 15 on speeches and meetings. Um, it's a great place to get story ideas. So this should help you if you're thinking about doing a speech or meeting for your uh, print piece. This is a great source of information for you. So be sure to read chapter 15.